What's up guys, today we're looking at the squeeze and excitation network. So CNET model that basically won the 2017 ImageNet classification. Okay, so the basic idea of the paper is that we put weights on every channel and it learns how to select a certain features that are relevant to the particular class. So if you think about it, imagine if you pass a plane, uh, image of a plane to the network, different channels so different feature are important for the plane than for example for a cat so we build additional network that that helps to uh, select these channels which are important for certain class okay before we dive into the paper we i'm going to briefly give you a bit of background what was going on back then okay so the main theme is like we can just add more layers because it's basically computationally expensive so we need to somehow play with the network to get that stronger representation. And yeah, they say here, a central theme of computer vision research is a search for more powerful representation that capture only those properties of an image that are most salient for a given task. Okay, so one such approach popularized by Inception family of architectures uh, incorporates multiscape process into network modules to achieve improved performance. So basically, yeah, that's what I said, rather than going deeper we need to go wider that's the main theme on inception if you don't know what inception is you can check my video on my channel but basically what they did is they split the input into some sort of branches and they use different kernels to um, to extract different features so this is a kind of spatial representation and they use one on one three on three five on five and i guess last one they use max pulling that was playing with the spatial representation of the features. In this way, they actually improved, they get this stronger representation without really increasing the computation power. In this paper, they investigated different aspects of network design, the relationship between channels. All right, okay, so that's how it looks like. And um, it basically, we got the one operation, which is squeezing the, um, so which is squeezing the feature map into one-on-one -on -one we just basically one value and then we got the excitation which basically select which channel is important and which isn't and then later on we got the scale where we multiply the channels by the scale values okay so they call this process a feature recalibration through they can learn to use global information to selectively emphasize informative informative features and suppress less useful ones. As I said, for example, if you pass a plane, some of the features are more important than the ones that you use for a cat. So that's really sleek and cool idea. Uh, we also can look at the uh, block architecture of it. So they use it for Inception and ResNet. If you don't know what ResNet is or you want to know more, you can check my video and they basically add it on the top of the after the residual mapping and what they do first is global pooling so this is the squeeze operation for each channel we got the average uh, values for each feature map then we have the fully connected layers which is scaled by the error parameter which we're going to discuss later but as you might think it's it's because of the computational reason they need to scale it down so fully connected layers find this dependency between channels then we got the ReLU add this non-linearity to the network then we got another fully connected layer which again finds these connections and also bring the shape again to the to the shape of the channels and we got the sigmoid at the end and it's mostly because as you remember the sigmoid it's it scales down to zero one values so it's perfectly fits here so every channel is scaled down to zero one value and zero one define the importance of each channel okay yeah and at the end we obviously scale it so we also going to implement it to the resnet block in uh, implementation okay what is really cool about this paper and i really that's why i basically review it is that you can think about it as an attention mechanism. So yeah, I think it's a really slick idea. And now we can basically jump into the whole architecture. Also, we're gonna implement to the ResNet. So we're gonna add it on the top of the ResNex that we coded in the last video. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. Yeah, so basically we add the squeeze and excitation block on the top of every block we have. So as you can see, they stated as a FC. 
and FC indicates the output dimension of two fully connected layers in SE module. Few words on the implementation. They use SGD with momentum 0.9, huge mini patch 1024, and initial learning rate set to 0.6. And I want to mention a really cool technique they used for overfitting, which is called label smoothing. So what it does, you basically, when you have one hot encoded vector like this, instead of keeping these hard values, they basically keep it like 0 0.9 and this one let's say 0 0.05 and another one 0 0.05 and what it does it basically helps the model to generalize better and make it more robust additionally they also initialize weight with k min uh, technique and the reduction ratio is set to 16 and they tested different uh, different error ratio so as you can see if the ratio is decreasing the number of parameters is dramatically increasing and they state here that ratio is a hyperparameter which allows us to vary the capacity and computational cost of SE block. R equal to 16 achieves a good balance between accuracy and complexity and we also going to use 16 in our network. So what's the results of the network? That's also important. They actually haven't improved much. Like if you look at the comparing to the ResNex, it's a 1% of 0.48. So it also points out another question like is, is ImageNet really a valid benchmark in terms of covenants? Because for me it's kind of became an MNIST where everyone's just optimizing the network to get that really 1% rather than coming up with some new ideas that really gonna, I mean, push the, the whole community forward. So yeah, let me know in a comment what's your opinion about it. But yeah, for me, like ImageNet was solved like to... Um, Two years before during the resnet i guess they pretty much surpassed the human level performance so but anyway um anyway let's go to the actual results that they prove what they state in the paper and just basically confirm the um, main idea the core idea of the paper so as you can see they draw 50 samples for each class from the validation set and compute the average activation for 50 uniformly sampled channels in the last SE block of each stage. Each stage is basically um, each, each part of the network when you get multiple blocks. Okay, so that's the stage 2, stage 3, stage 4, stage 5. Alright, so as you can see, um, this is the activation, y-axis and x-axis is a channel. So first pretty much stage of the network, they more or less the same. Um, in the next channel, they they kind of in they kind of differ but still not much but when we go deeper that's where the specific class information is really distinguished as you can see yeah cliff has completely different activation than the uh, the park for example right and when we go even deeper so it's a uh, stage 5 this activation really vary for different class and that's what proves basically the the idea separate weights for each channel so basically the relevance of each channel okay in this one you can actually see that the activation are different for different classes and for example in this case cliff has much higher activation than the plane at this channel for this feature right and in the last one it's basically different class has different activation pattern so yeah they say it here with the exception of unusual behavior at stage five, the activation become increasingly, increasingly class specific with increasing depth. So yeah, that's basically what this paper is all about, right? Okay, so that's pretty much it for this paper. Now we can go to do the call up and just add our squeeze and excitation block. Okay, so we're gonna implement it to our ResNet architecture that we already have. So the only thing we gotta do is basically add the squeeze and excitation block. So we start with defining SE block. So we inherit a module. And in init function we pass C, so number of channels. And the hyperparameter E, uh, which we define as 16. Okay, so we obviously call super function. And yeah, first thing we got in block is a global pooling. So let's go to global pool. Okay, so yeah, we use adaptive average pooling. And what's the difference between average pooling and adaptive average pooling? In adaptive average pooling, you only pass the output that you want to have. So you don't need to specify the kernel size, stride, or padding, right? 
PyTorch figures out on itself how to achieve this output that you want and figures out basically the kernel size stride and padding. While in regular average pooling, you need to predefine the kernel size stride and padding to the output that you want. Okay, so that's really handy. And another one is fully connected layer. First one, so linear in features is basically channels and the output is channels divided by a. Then we go a second fully connected layer where the input is channels divided by a and the output is channels. Okay, so the other thing is just ReLU and sigmoid. Okay, now we can basically find a forward function where we pass the where we pass the output of residual mapping. Okay, so we need to save a because later on we're gonna scale it. So I'm gonna define it as f from the same convention as it was in the ResNet. We're gonna define it as f. Okay, first squeezing by using global pulling. Then we got the excitation. So ReLU fc1 f and sigmoid fc2 and f okay so that's basically it but so the x shape will be n is the number of examples in a batch c is cha channels and the size of the feature map and f shape will be n and c okay we also need to add we need to flatten it okay so the F shape is going to be NC, right? What we need to do, we need to, to multiply it with uh, X. We need to reshape it, but we can do it in a different way. So we just add non and non. And what it basically does is just adds to another dimension here. Okay, so now what we need to just do is basically multiply it. And that's basically it. So now we just need to basically add it on the top of the residual block. Okay, so we get our residual block. We just add C block is equal to C. Okay, so what we do here is um, we need to define C. So that's output channels because we put it after the residual map, right? Okay, and yeah, choose basically pass the output of residual mapping to our C block and yeah that's basically it we can actually see if it works yeah that's what we wanted to have that was a quick one that was a pretty easy one and yeah if you enjoyed it please leave a like and if you want to see more of my content hit the subscribe button and yeah see you in the next one